Chris. Thanks, Sarah. Well, Esther McVeigh, the Minister for Disabled People, is with me. Now, if you lose your DLA and you don't qualify for one of these new PIP payments, what are you supposed to do? Just go without? Well, can I just correct a mistake there that was just said about the 20% cut? It isn't. What we're doing is measuring the growth because it had gone up by nearly 35% in 10 years. So we're continuing to spend £13 billion every year on DLA and PIP. In fact, it will be slightly higher in 2015-16 in real terms than it was in 2009. So I can get that right. And what we're doing is ensuring that the £13 billion pounds we spend right. every year well, are allocated question. at those who need it the most. Come to the question. If you lose your PIP, what are you supposed to do? Just do without? No, well, hang on a sec. We don't know whether anybody will lose their PIP because actually you're talking about people who are deaf. Well, for the, the first time, hang on a sec. For the first time ever, uh, deaf people will be recognised. This wasn't recognised before under DLA, but they will specifically under PIP. For, for people like Bessney, who was in Casey Razzle's piece, uh, who don't have sign language as their first, uh, first language, they may lose their PIPs. Uh, now, no, because we're specifically recognising it under PIP, which was not done before in DLA. So you're coming you up that, with... Are you, you saying know, that nobody's going to lose their point. DLA? No, what? Are you saying that everyone who's on DLA is going to get their PIP? So there's no issue here. Nobody needs to worry. What we are saying is it had grown by nearly 40% in 10 years. So and we're I'm measuring asking the you, what and happens what we to are people saying, who lose their payments? Uh, when they lose their payments, we have decided, it has been deci uh, decided under the assessment, that they no longer need that extra money that would be there for people so to help with So what are they supposed to do? Their... Just go without? No. Because this money you get, oh, whether you're it. in work or out of work, and it is there to cover the extra costs of your disability. Exactly. So if you've now been decided that actually this extra money you don't need it anymore, then it won't. It'll be going then to you other people. It. Well, that's if it right. has been decided that you, you don't, don't need it, then what are you supposed to do to pay for those things that you're currently using DLA to pay for? Because you what, just do without no, them, do you? Because what we're saying is, if it is decided, because this is specifically money to help that. you with the extra cost of disability, so if you don't need that money anymore, it will go to people who do. Because let's, let's get this okay. right. What happens, it's not a static benefit. People don't go on it and need it forever. It's actually a dynamic yes. benefit. Some people with health conditions will get better. And so what we're saying, with medical support, with actually the body healing, a third of people who might talk about having a condition one year will not have it the following you, year. You, so you and think a third of doing... people will come off no, benefits we, because no, the body no, heals? Is, no, that, no. is that your, that's your estimate? New, let me finish what I'm saying. Well, you just said that, Some people, no, some people, some people's condition will stay the same. Some people's okay. condition will get worse. But you are going to so be assessing. So they will keep it. You're going to be reassessing people with degenerative illnesses, aren't you? What's the point of that? Well, actually, some people, although there will be a paper assessment in that case, they won't be having a face-to-face -face assessment because if we can actually diagnose individuals through their historical data and their medical data, then we will be able to come what to the same thing. What about people with multiple sclerosis? The same or thing. Will they, will they have face-to-face -face interviews what, or not? Well, if you can analyse whether they will need the benefit through their medical data and the historical data, no. Why but does what anybody with saying, MS need, need a face-to-face -face interview? They're not going to get better, are they? On. At the moment, as your reporter had already said, 50% of people have no corroborating medical evidence. They filled in uh, a claim form. And what we're doing now is ensuring that the money we continue to spend, which is, as I said, going up, will go to those okay. people who need it the most. We are here to support those people. Let, let me bring you on to the bedroom tax, which, as you know, is affecting hundreds of thousands of disabled people. I mean, do you have any appreciation of the the fear and the worry that you are causing disabled people who are, who are worried about losing their homes or having to go without something else because they're going to lose £14 pounds a week, which may not be much to you, but it's a lot to them. Well, hang on a sec. What we're doing here is ensuring the £50 billion pounds in the entirety that we spend on people with disabilities through benefits and support is going to the right people. And we're making sure that we are spending it in the correct places. Yeah, but you, and you're the making point is you are going to take away people. benefits from disabled people, aren't you? Uh, if they no longer they need this... Dis uh, no, hang on a sec. If it's a child who actually can't share a bedroom with another child, no, they will be exempt. Pensioners they, will be but, exempt. Say, exactly. You're exempting disabled children, but not disabled adults. 
Well, now, a lot no, of disabled adults have got very, no, hang on a sec. very also, specific needs. No, hang on. Some There's of them also are... significant discretionary payments, £150 million pounds there, and should people need but them, the principle should there be... is no, that no, they won't get no, it. No, the principle is that you're actually being rather alarmist. What we're You're saying the one changing is, the rules, no, no, not me. because there is 150 million pounds there that is discretionary payment to help all these people you're talking uh, about. Should there have been significant adaptations, we're supporting them. Should you need okay. an overnight Let me carer, talk to you about we one. are supporting you're them. You're changing the mobility grants uh, so that if you can walk 21 meters, uh, you won't get your mobility grant. You won't get your car paid for anymore. No, if you can walk, if you walk well, 19 meters, then you still get it. No, What's the got, point of that? No, you've got that wrong as well. No, what we have said is we were looking at it because there was confusion within the 50 meters and how far. Well, you, you could might walk. well lose no, your no. mobility grant if you can walk no. 21 meters. Well, That's if, the point. if you'd let me finish, at 20 meters, you'd automatically get it. However, if you could walk more than 20 meters, 21. but not safely reliably, repeatedly and in a timely fashion, you could well still get the higher rate mobility. So I'm glad I've been able to clarify okay. that. Now look, I, I put this out on Twitter. As you know, there are a lot of very vocal disabled people on Twitter earlier today to say that you were coming in. I've got a range of responses. I have to say, two of the most shocking repeated responses are, how do you sleep at night? And do you feel any guilt about the suicides that have come as a result of changing the welfare system and the existing assessments? I'll, I'll tell you how I sleep at night. And this is that we have done the biggest ever consultation, nearly two years, to get this benefit and the assessments right. I'll tell you how I sp sleep at night, because £50 billion we continue to spend. The UK are world leaders in the support they give to disability people, and I'm proud of that, and I okay. want to keep that. No, no, it's a fifth higher that we spend than in Europe. It's more than double that is spent in America, and it's six times Japan. And we are spending the money we have most fairly, and we're doing a very good job at that. What about this? Is this right or wrong? Do you agree with it? Uh, actually, I think that needs to be separated completely from welfare. I think the family there, it's a very tragic, I hope it's a Do they have anything to do it with is Welfare a UK? a terrible situation there, and I would say quite clearly, separate the two. That was okay. very tragic. The man and the family will be sentenced, and, you know, he will get his sentence right. both in this life and the next life for what he's done to those children. Estimate, Ray, thank you for coming in. Thank you.